I don't have Chad Finn's voice. Nobody listens to me. presentation, but really, these are the folks that uh, did the work, and Randy would be here, but he's in Washington right now, actually with the group that's lobbying for uh, funding for the Small Fruit Center. And uh, he gave this presentation, Randy Honkook, who's a Washington red raspberry grower up in Abbotsford. I just thought it was really good information on new planting techniques and stuff that's coming up that I think is going to be useful for us, especially with uh, needing to plant more tissue culture. So, Lisa Wasco de Vetter is the new small fruit horticulturist up at Mount Vernon. And she sent me some samples of materials that I'll pass around. Make sure I get these back. We'll go back to uh, Lisa. So, and these are just different samples of what they're coming up with for biodegradable mulches. Uh, it's basically pretty straightforward taking the same place as we've used plastics all these years, only this breaks down into the soil. You don't have to take it up. After a couple of years, it's going to deteriorate. That's the idea. Pretty much straightforward. You put it on a lot of the vegetable crops and uh, Cane for strawberries are using this material, but I think it's got a real place in caneberry production also. And after it gets weathered after a couple of years or whatever, that's one of the big variables is how quick it breaks down. Uh, it breaks down in the soil. <coughs> like this, you can see it's starting to break down. Why use them? There's a lot of pretty obvious uses, I think. Uh, horticultural benefits. You don't have to put so many weeds on, you don't have to put or so many herbicides on. It gets the plants off to a quicker start. The usual things with something that's under the plant like that. Reduce labor and also the big thing is removal costs and getting rid of all this plastic material. One thing to keep in mind, which kind of surprised me, is currently no products, and there's some of these coming around, there's quite a few that are paper-based, and they seem to be a much more of an issue. Uh, the ones that are more, uh, that are not paper-based, you'll see on some of these samples, are better. But presently, there's no things other than the paper ones that meet organic standards. There's a lot of differences, so definitely the devil's in the detail with these things. If you use them, 
make sure you're comparing and contrasting what kind of materials you've got out there, how fast they're going to break down, um, how effective they are, whether they're going to break down effectively. There's there's still a lot of dynamic movement in this in this field. Yeah. Did I understand that correctly? That the only thing that can be used in organic production right now is paper-based materials. I think it's right here. These are the ones that are labeled that are based on paper. So plastic mulches. <coughs> Biodegradable. Biodegradable. Regular plastic is usable. Is usable. Yeah. And again, I am no expert on this. If we get some of these questions, some of you guys can answer better than me. But no, regular plastic is fine. It's these guys, they're not sure how well they're breaking down yet for organic things. So, so there's those two categories, of paper-based and the bioplastics. <coughs> and the one that Randy Honkoop used, I'll be showing you is, is organics. <coughs> I think I got there. I'll hand that around after the, the samples. That's the particular one that Randy used on his uh, raspberries. A lot of vegetable yeast. I don't know if there's anyone in here who's been using these and <coughs> share experience, but a lot of the veg crops are, are going to these also. This is four different kinds, cornstarch based. This is the experimental one, and I believe this is the one that, uh, that Lisa's very strong on. It's being manufactured up there. Uh, this is the cellulose base paper, and this is standard, just to give you some concept of the, the choices and comparisons. So this is Randy's farm up in Linden. He farms, he's not a big farmer, maybe 50 acres, but he is the research chair for the Washington Red Raspberry Commission. And he's just a very good farmer. I could probably go through this quicker in my time, but we'll see. So he did, does a lot of his own machine work. He rigged this up. Go down the rows, you can see he puts strip tape right underneath it. As it goes down, this is what it looks like afterwards. And you can remember last year, these were tissue culture plants that were put in the ground in June of last year. So this was put in just as our heat was really hitting. see what it looks like without that on top. You've got a drip tape going right down the row underneath it. It looks like they did some weeding in there too. Obviously it does away with need to weed. <clears throat> At least by hand. This was a couple months later. Just beautiful plant growth. You know what variety Um this is uh, I'm pretty sure it's a I guys might know what we're doing now, but I know we didn't go with uh, Cascade Harvest. So it's, it's meager it's not good. and or he still has a few little laments left. Like, I don't know if he's And this is what it looks like. I mean, it just gave him a beautiful stand, crop stand. It gave, gave him, the, the, I mean, there's a number of questions. We don't know how fast this is going to break down, but in raspberries in particular, where you've got all the, the runners and primary is kind of spreading out, you don't want this stuff in the way for too long. So I can see a beautiful fit for it. And blackberries are even more so. But I can see a beautiful fit for it where it's going to break down in a couple of years. <coughs> but to get the tissue culture established, it just was, I thought it was really cool. This is one of the materials, like I say, there's a lot of development going on with this at the moment. Um, one of the materials that's just coming out, and Lisa DeVetter 
is very high on this particular one. You guys from Linden, I don't know if you know anything more about this, but speak up if you do. You're always and it can be used in any of our crops, obviously. There's no, no reason it couldn't work in blueberries as well. But I think the devil's in those details of what product you get and knowing the precise characteristics of that. I can get you some of this if you want it later, some of these resources that, that uh, Lisa's passed along. At the end of his presentation, I loved it, Randy pulled out his wallet and said, the funding for this project came right from here. So, um, this is Lisa and uh, Randy up at this farm. Lisa's one of our newer scientists. She's just been here for a couple of years now. She's doing some terrific work. That's it. Very quick. Have so, pictures side by side where they didn't put the mulch down compared to where it did just to see the difference in growth, did you? No, I don't. I don't. It'd be nice to get something like that. Randy does such a good job that he gets a, he usually puts drip down, I believe. Anyway, does Randy use drip? I believe he does. Yeah. So he does a good job anyway. Um, it would really be nice to do some trials on some of these different materials. And we get growers down here to start experimenting with this. I mean, we can do so much on farm I, or uh, at the research station. I think with this kind of a product, it lends itself well to farmer trial and error to a certain extent. Let's see what works for us, what doesn't. Uh, the propagator is going to be talking later. You know, what I see with a lot of the blackberry growers right now and raspberries <clears throat> is this transition of how to handle tissue culture plants. And this seems to answer a fair number of those questions. Or it's one of the options. Joe? Yeah, I may have missed it. Did you, did you say how quick they're supposed to break down? You know, you want it to be gone by the time you get it. Part of the problem is some of them were breaking down too fast. And we can see some of these trials. There's a lot of trials done in strawberries and veg crops that we can get some of this data from. But they would break down after a couple of months. But others will break down into smaller pieces that they're not sure how fast that's really going to degrade completely, which I think is why they have so much trouble getting. Uh, organic labels for some of them. There's also some questions about whether they might be releasing. You've got fruit and strawberries that are laying right on top of those things. What type of chemicals might be being passed on the fruit? This is a, a product that's breaking down. <coughs> so there's a number of questions to be answered. But it seems like a direction that's going to be developed pretty quickly. There'd be a big market for this stuff. So, um, any other questions? <laughs> With that, oh, was there a question? Well, Tom, I was just going to comment. Uh, I think Ken kind of was asking about the difference between the um, mulch plants versus the non-mulch ones. And in his presentation, he said there was about a 50% growth increase by his estimate. Okay. That's not not objective, but it's the objective opinion of it, and about 30% reduction in water. You listen better than I did. Uh, but did you guys hear that? Uh, Randy said there was a 50% increase in the growth and about a 30% decrease in water use. It's giving you control of that entire human environment, which is a big advantage. I believe Kevin was working on a uh, subsidizing thing from the water uh, for, for like mold spreaders and such. The idea the, is the information you pass on so you buy a mold spreader the, and then the water conservation will rebate you some money for consuming water. So I think we've got some information on that at the shop. So it's been proven. So mold spreaders or, or 
the, the material for laying down the, the plants. Well, no, the whole split is all the ones you put in the, you know, we're going to make water and organic uh, you know, supplements on top that prevent the evaporation. So. Any idea what cost is on that? It's 95 bucks a roll, he said, per acre, and I was surprised how low it was. That it was down according to the cost sheet. Was it that much? Uh, it was. Uh, maybe maybe Jason was actually listening to it. I don't remember. One hundred dollars for five hundred foot roll. <clears throat> okay. Which is another of the big variables. It's obviously cost. But I mean, if you can get these plants at a smaller size, that's what we're always struggling with: getting these these tissue culture units in time and before we have kids. A system like this is going to manage those risks a lot better. But. We've got a, a, a little ways to go. I think it'd be worth it to put some research funding into it at some point. Well, I've, I've got a mulch layer, and I tried to biodegrade mulch. And I'm, I'm not not the farmer Randy is, so I've got weeds and things like that. In my it field depends and, on what kind, though. And yeah, the the doc and that said grew through it the first week. Of the Do you remember the type you used? I don't exactly. I went with that. I went with the direct plastic, and I did with I did the um, fabric down. The fabric is the only thing that can go through the black plastic. The original plastic boom right through it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, these guys up there start with really clean fields. <laughs>